Hi y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to turn CDs, music CDs, into something that looks like glass. That's what we're going to do. Are you excited? Because I've been working on this for weeks. Yep, be turned into something like glass. Okay, so let me flip you around and show you guys how I do it, okay? Okay, you guys, we're going to make this stuff. Okay, it's going to involve two CDs and some acrylic paint. So you're going to need a variety of acrylic paint. I'm using up some really old acrylic paint, but you just need a variety of colors. Pretty much whatever you have on hand. You can also use the paint in the tubes, my understanding. And that's all I really know. Uh, there are other people on... YouTube who are doing this so definitely check out other people's videos too but they come out differently once you start messing around so that's the front side that's the back side so we're gonna I'm gonna show you guys how to do this this was one I do not suggest that you use the paint with the glitter in it, the chunky glitter in it, because it didn't come out good at all. I mean, it's okay. I don't know if I'll keep this one or not. The back looks better than the front. But if you can tell, there's bumps on the front. So I don't know if this piece is going to be a keeper or not, but it's in there. I also attempted to put paint and stuff between two CDs and melt them together to turn them into some sort of wind chime or sun catcher um, honestly I don't think it was that much of a success because you can see the red glitter paint through here a little bit but the other side it, it went it went funny so I don't know um, this one's okay I do I am planning on taking a Dremel tool and going and cleaning up the edges I'm going to do the same thing with these I will get the Dremel tool out and I will shape these into shapes. So this may not be square when I'm done. Uh, this may not be triangle when I'm done. I may, you know, shape into it, carve into it and make some sort of shape. Uh, this, this might get turned into a circle kind of, you know, whatever with the Dremel tool. Okay. Um, I do tape when I do two alike to make it that I think that might make earrings. I tape them together with the top sides. Um, with the with the front sides together. See, they're kind of pretty. They're all kind of unique. Um, so let's get to deciding what we need to do. So you're gonna start with you're gonna start with a couple CDs, okay? And in the process of starting with the CDs, there's a video where I show you guys how to remove this. So I will just hit on this real quick. I'm not gonna spend much time on removing the label. We're gonna go over it real quick like. Basically to remove this label, you need some packing tape. You can use duct tape. I did not find duct tape to work as well as packing tape. And in my opinion, you need a good back packing tape. This is Scotch 3M. I did not have as much as much success with um, dollar dollar store Dollar Tree packing tape. I didn't find it was it was flimsier tape. So I have had more luck with this tape than anything. What you're going to do is you're going to take something sharp and you're going to scrape just a little bit just a little bit right there of your label and hopefully this comes off for me so I can show you guys but I did a video on this so you need a piece of tape and what you're going to do is you're going to where you put that scrape at you're going to place the tape down press it down and let's hope it comes off And you remove the, the label so you just basically go around this whole thing 
with uh, tape. You want to make sure it's always a kind of a clean piece of tape. And you're just going to remove the label, basically. That's what you're going to do. Now, why this piece right here is not coming up, it kind of felt like something was on it there. But that's what you're going to do. Okay, you're going to basically go around. Um, if you can't get it all off, it's not the end of the world. Because you could use this as your top CD with this down on the wet paint. You could use this one as your top CD and then you would get some silver in it. But uh, like I said, I already did a video on how to do that. So we'll go on from here. What you're going to do now is you are going to cut your CDs up into shapes. Now, there's several ways you can do this. Um, you can actually take a ruler and draw lines and grids to get perfect squares. Um, you can just go at it um, however you want to go at it. I personally would rather just cut out cut out pieces and then um, later um, shape them into the shape I want them. So you're basically gonna just going to have to cut your tile. I mean, cut your CD. How did I say tile? I'm making tiles out of them. I just heard it crack. Now, there are people out there who say that you can stick the CD in the freezer before you cut it and it won't crack. Somebody else says put it in a pan of hot water um, for five minutes and it won't crack. I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. There's a crack right there's a crack right there, I think. So but I what I do is I just basically I basically cut my shape out. Okay. I should have gone ahead and cut this one in half too. It's a little sticky there. That's why I say watch what glue what watch what tape you're using. Because I used some old backing tape and I got sticky. I tried to remove it with Gooby Gone and it didn't come off. So let me I want I want identical size pieces. Now I think it's best to use identical size pieces for this. In other words, your top piece and your bottom piece be identical in size or awful close to it. Um, the another person on YouTube um, she cut them close enough and she was happy with it. But again, that's a personal preference. Do it however you're happy with it, okay? It's a personal preference. So I'm going to take this little piece. I already cut off this half. I'm going to line it up to here. I'm going to cut it as close as I can to that piece. Hope you all can see this. Okay, so I'm now I could leave this one like this, and then that would give me a really big piece that I could work from. Um, I think I will, but I think I'm going to remove this this round part. I think I'm just going to go by and cut the side of that off. See, that would be a statement piece. Now, if I went back with the Dremel tool and I kind of shaped this into something, that might be very attractive. Now, I suggest that you wear goggles when you do this for safety. And if you're concerned about cutting yourself at all on this plastic while you're doing this, definitely put on some gloves. Those are just safety ideas. You know, you, you could actually sit here, like I said, and draw grids on it and get perfect, per, perfect squares, but I'm not, I'm not concerned about perfect squares. I'm not concerned about that. I'm just cutting them up. Look at that one. You just want to get your shapes in there. And I just heard cracking. If it just cracks, like on this one right here, there are some cracks. 
I found that it didn't really bother it. So, I mean, it was okay. I found it really, it really did not make a difference when cooking it, when cooking it. And you're going to, you're going to want to use an old toaster oven. Um, you're going to want to figure out what works for you. I watched a lady who she did 15 minutes bake. Oh no, 10 minutes bake, 10 minutes broil, 10 minutes bake, 10 minutes broil. I so far have been trying, um, the broil method only. That might be why I get bubbles. Um, I'm not unhappy about them. Um, so that's what I've been doing. I have been saving these pieces right here and putting paint on them for a friend who does a lot of um, mosaic work from recycled materials. So I may put some paint on those and save those for her. I, if she doesn't want it, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, I just thought of her for a second. Now I'm going to leave these these points on. No, I'm not. I'm going to cut them off. See, we were talking about it. I'm glad I could discuss it with you guys. I'm going to cut these points off. Like I said, this may not stay the shape. When I get the Dremel tool out, when this is all done, I might actually circle this, you know, uh, make it circle instead. And I think the Dremel tool would be easier to do than to try to cut these because they do splinter. Unless you can figure out how to cut them where they won't splinter. Alright, so basically, after you get them cut out... Like I said, you're going to use whatever paint you want to use. Okay. Put these over here. Hope y'all can see this okay. You're going to want to use whatever paint you want to use. Okay. And you're going to need a cookie sheet or something. Now, I found some people on YouTube say you don't need to line the cookie sheet or nothing. Just put them on a pan and they will, um, they will be fine. I, I have a whole bunch of these old toaster oven pans. Every time I see one at a Goodwill or something for nothing, I buy them because I never know what I'm going to do with one. So I suggest that, yes, you do use foil. You do not have to use non-stick foil. You can use regular foil, and you can put it on the shiny side or the, or the dull side. It does not matter. But I do suggest that you use foil. Okay. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to get a paintbrush. You're going to decide what paint you want to use. So let's do a pink one and a purple one. I would not use more than three colors at most. And the reason why I say that is if you use more than three colors, in my opinion, you're going to muddy up your 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 um, tile. Oh, I'm sore. You're going to muddy up your tile. You don't want to muddy up your tile. Um, the colors will like mush together and you won't see them as clear. Let's put a little yellow in this one. Two. Like I said, my paints are old. So that's why I said it doesn't really matter what paint you use. I just think you have to use acrylic. I don't know about anything else. I don't know if you can use enamel paints. I don't know. I'm sure you could use alcohol inks and, and then melt them. Alright, so basically you're going to want to paint this one. The, you're going to want to paint a tile. The, whatever's the bottom tile, in my opinion. Or, you know, that's what I do. That's just how I do it. You want to just swipe some paint on there. Okay? You just want to swipe paint on. So once you get your paint on, then you're going to place your, your other tile. See, there's a little bit of silver still, but that's okay. You want to place your tile on there. I mean, your other half of the CD. You can wipe away the excess paint, but I'm not too worried about it because, like I said, I'm going to carve into this when it's done. That's my plans. Now, if you're not going to carve into one and you just want to make the tiles, then I would definitely I would definitely try my best to get the, the desired shape of the tile 
from the beginning so that you uh, don't have to do any a lot of cleanup and I would wipe this off really well at the beginning because if, if you don't wipe off the excess paint it will cook on and it will be matted it'll be a matte finish on it I have a horrible looking rag towel here See, that's gonna be pretty then you put it on your pan and you go ahead and fill now one person said that you needed to allow your paint to dry 24 hours okay another person said um, let it dry a couple days um, one other person said if you paint if you cook them while they're wet they won't dry right and they'll peel apart I've tried it all okay I've tried all the different techniques I think you have to figure out what you're comfortable and what works for you you know do whatever you think you want to do okay don't just figure out what works for you okay I cook mine while they're still wet yes I've had one or two split apart but I cook them while they're still wet it does not seem to be a problem for me but again figure out what you want to do with them okay just 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 have fun with it and it's very addicting someone said it was very addicting and I was like is it addicting it's very addicting guys it's very addicting once you start making these things and you figure out how you're making them it's very addicting I agree with the person I agree that it is I kind of can't stop making them and make sure you're in a ventilated area when you do it um, you know if you can do it outside on a patio uh, carport or something make sure you're in a ventilated area in case the smell is too much for you depending on how you're cooking yours I have mine sitting in front of an open window and um, I got paint on the foil I don't want paint on the foil because it'll cook on to the uh, back side of this okay there you go yeah, make sure you're in a ventilated, make sure it's ventilated for safety. And if you're concerned about any kind of smell still, wear a mask or something, you know. Do whatever you feel you need for safety. But I do not believe this is a, this is a craft for small children. I, I really don't think this should be a craft for any child without extreme parent uh, supervision when doing this. You know, I think it could be dangerous for kids. I do not know how to do them with any kind of glitter on them. Um, I just don't think they come out right. I mean, maybe there is a way of doing it with glitter in it. And you can see the glitter, but I haven't figured it out. Okay, so I've got about four here. That I'm gonna go cook. Uh, let me go ahead and do this last one. And then I'll cook it and then I'll bring you guys back after I cook it and we'll go from there. I might be able to put a third one on there. I mean another one on there. I might be able to put another one on there. like I said have fun with this this is actually I find this very fun all right so I'm gonna go cook these five you know you do not want them touching in case they do melt bigger than they were for example this one melted bigger than it was 
even melt with a hole in it. At first I thought, oh crap, it's got a hole in it. But then I thought, wait a minute. As someone said, it makes it more organic. So I'm actually okay with the hole. Um, I'm planning on, on cleaning them up, putting bales on them, and putting them on either a black cord or a, um, a cord that is um, complementary to the colors I've used. So let me put you guys on hold for a minute. Let me go cook these, and then we can see how they came out, okay? Okay, you guys, we are back. I pulled them out of the toaster oven. So, this is what we have. And like I said, it comes off the foil. It comes off the foil quite easy. Let me get rid of... Let me get rid of that plastic. So you just pull it off the foil. And this is that this is really cheap foil. It's I think it's from the Dollar General. But I've used Dollar Tree, so I'd just rather not rip it and make it stick. Now I have not decided. Now you see what I was telling you guys about what that one woman said. If you paint them wet wet, they will separate. Well that one's separated. So um I think what will happen with this one is that when I go to Dremel tool it. I think I will um, try to cut down to here where it's still stuck together and see what happens. So, but for the most part, not every tile comes out okay. That's I've come to that conclusion. Not every tile. And a little bit of blue paint got on the top there and uh, left a mark there. I don't know if I tried to bake them, if I would get a cleaner, a clearer picture, you know, a clearer look on them. Um, they seem a little bubbly-ish, like there's bubbles inside. I don't know. You know, I have not tried painting them, letting the, the one tile completely dry, and then put the other tile on top of it and then do it. That might be a thing to try. That might be a thing to try. Huh, I'll have to think about that one. I'm going to have to try that. That might eliminate some of the bubbling. I don't know. But I'm not going to do any more of these right now. So, But I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to show you guys how they look. And these are ones that I've already dremeled. That's the back side. That's the front side. I went ahead and just it had it had a chip here, so I went ahead and like cleaned it up. I might do a little bit more to it. I don't know. Um, here's another one. You know, imagine either a drill hold into the drill, a hole drilled a drill hold. I was so I apologize. I mean I talk that way anyways. Period. But I'm gonna blame it right now on pain medication. <laughs> I'm still sore from the accident, but I'm going to drill. I don't know if I'm going to drill a hole and put a jump ring in it and hang it from a bale or if I'm going to glue a bale on the back and hang it so that way. I don't know yet. And here's another one. Here's another one. I think they're really pretty. Um, I'm sure you could use something like um, diamond effects or... Um, and glaze both, you know, glaze this side and even put another glaze on top. I don't know. I have not tried spraying them with a, um, a, a clear coat or nothing to um, make this shiny. I have not tried it yet. Um, this one is different. I believe I put just a tape. I mean, I believe I just put a CD on top of a CD. Um, then I didn't put any paint in it or nothing. It ha still had all of its label kind of shiny stuff on it. So it's just, I think they're pretty. This is the front. I think they're pretty. And then these are up here earrings ready to be uh, a hole drilled in them. 
and them turn and they will be turned into earrings. I used masking tape because I didn't think it would stick. See, those are pretty. I'm beginning to think I might want to glaze them because now I see in this light that there's still some. Um, um, there's still some, you know, paint because it's matted looking. So I might try glazing them before I turn them in the jewelry yet. They're not done yet. This is like just a process to get them to this. Um, as far as being ready for jewelry yet, I would say no, because I think they need to be glazed somehow. I mean, maybe just a good coat of a good spray paint. A clear coat paint might be the answer. Um, I don't know yet, so I'm gonna have to play with that. But I got you to this point. From here on out, we gotta figure it out. But I got you this far to make these, how to turn these into these. So that's as far as I got you with this particular process. Um, look at other um, videos of other people who are doing this uh, because they do it slightly different. And I think you, I think with this particular, um, with this particular thing, you have to figure out what works for you. But I do think now that we've discussed it, and I'm glad we could have this conversation, <laughs> I do think I'm going to try painting. I think I'm going to try painting some, not putting them together until I go to cook them. Hmm. But then again, I don't think that's going to work because honestly, like I said, this was, this had no paint in it and it still bubbled. So I don't know. You have to just like what it comes out to or not like what it comes out to. Because if you, if you fret about it, like, look at that one. That one's pretty. That's one of those, and those pieces. Like here, this is bubbly. But I used two metallic paints and look how pretty that one came out. So you just have to like, I think with this, you just have to accept how they come out. That one cloudied up. And that's one of the things one woman said by not letting them dry would happen. The paints would, would be cloudy. This one had glitter in it. You can't really see it. You can barely see it. So you just really have to like, you have to kind of figure this one out for yourself. But I am beginning to think they might need a clear coat. They might need a clear coat. This one I thought was really pretty. That one I thought was really pretty. I kind of like these ones that bubbled. Like that went down in. I kind of like these ones that kind of bubble. I do need to clean up that rough edge. That's why I'm doing the Dremel tool. There are rough edges. This one's kind of pretty. This one had glitter in it. And it did something weird. It's like a bubble here. So I have to be very careful when I dremel this one that I don't open that bubble up. I mean, there's so, there's so much. And I guess once you clear coat them, then you can decide which you want for front and back. Don't you know? See, there's just so many things you can, there's just so many color combinations. And I don't even care that it's slightly, slightly bended, melted in a bend, because it's, as the one woman said, a little more organic that way. This one's kind of pretty. I did it with bronze. Bronze and purple. That one's pretty. There's lots of them. They're all pretty. This one had some of that, um, stuff still left on it and when it melted it kind of wanted to curl up and it's on the in between the two layers I just think they're really pretty I'm telling you this is a if you like this this becomes quite addicting I do wish I could figure out how not to have the bubbles maybe I'll, maybe I'll try the baking and in, 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 uh, but I think I tried the baking and um broiling thing like bake it broil it, bake it broil it. and it may have a lot to do with where you live now I do not remember what color this one was there was a label left on the back side um, 
so uh, this one this one melted it melted weird and the label cracked now I have not tried a heat gun on this stuff um, I thought about trying a heat gun my son suggested I take a heat gun and try to melt them that one's really pretty see there's so many pretty ones people so many pretty ones so many pretty ones this one I really like I don't know what it is but I really like this one it almost burned it almost burned but I think it's gorgeous this was one that had been cracked and you can kind of see the crack line right here but I kind of like that it makes it kind of have a vein in it so the cracks don't really bother me because it kind of gave it a vein see there's just so many things you can do I'm just show and tell it now this one's pretty they're all pretty they're all pretty they're all pretty see now this one's pretty but the back is prettier so I do have to decide if I am going to glaze them and when I glaze them, if, or clear coat them, which side I want to use for the front. See? This one's pretty too. This one almost burnt a little bit, but I think it, it didn't burn. But there's holes here. You can actually, there's holes. I don't know if you can see them. But I really, really like this. It so reminds me, and I've said it to friends, this so reminds me of my mom was an art teacher. And she, uh, you know, basically had to take art in college. And um, this was a, I need to make sure more of this shape. Um, she has a few pieces of jewelry that are uh, enamel, um, metal enamel. And I remember, I remember she had some glass pieces, like back in the 70s when they um, melted bottles and had chips of colored glass inside the melted bottles. This is what this reminds me of. That's what it reminds me of. That one's pretty cute. They're all so pretty. Reminds me of that stuff. So I guess I'm going to put away my little tile hoard here. That one's pretty. This I put um, like a like a white metallic paint in there. And then I put the uh, chunky black glitter that came in one of these bottles. Uh, I got it at Walmart. And it bubbled. I don't know if you can see the bubbles. It's got one, two, three, four bumps. I'm hoping to be able to not mess this one up when I clean it up a little bit because I really think that one's cool as all get out. Oh, it's got a weak spot right there. Oh, it's got a weak spot. I'll be concerned about that. I have to think about that one. Maybe if I clear coat it, it won't be so weak. See, they all look about the same, so I can't tell you which one was paint, which one dried for two days, which one dried for one day. I can't tell you. I just don't know. All right, I'm going to say bye. So I'm going to say like and subscribe. And art is created, so go create some art. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.